Hello guys, it's Unders, and as per a user request, today we're going to dive into the automation and how it works inside FL Studio. And if you have a request that you would like to make for the channel, simple process. Subscribe to the channel, request in the comments below of why you think it would be a relevant thing for me to do, and I'll see if I can do it. Simple as that. So the way automation works in FL Studio is different to pretty much every DAW out there, um, as in it can be rooted and connected to anything. It's completely modular. So the fact that people don't generally understand it or how to use it or what you can do with it makes a lot of sense to me. So one of the most simple ones we can do, if we grab uh, any old loop here, we can automate the volume of any piece of audio. For option here, we can just scroll and zoom in a touch. There's always this little audio icon just at the top here. If we click on it, we have automate. Automate gives us two options, volume and panning. So we can put volume on there, pop it on the channel below it, and I'll always link my automation channels together. So this track to I'm going to drag up until it snaps, we get a nice little black line on the left there that shows it's now snapped to that channel and that's going to control the volume of this audio clip so I could do something like this super easy All right, easy mode. So we've got a volume fade. Let's have a look at how the automation system actually works inside FL. So once we've got a clip to work with, like this guy right here, we can add points by right clicking on just about anywhere and they'll snap to your snap grid, whatever you've got your snap setting set to, which is this little icon just up here. I'm just gonna leave it on the grid for now, but you could set it to none, cell, whatever the hell it is you need. So we right click to create a new point. Now in between two points, we always have another smaller point and this is a curve handle. We can move this to just create nice curves in our automation, right? So we can have this, so it holds out right into the second bar here and that will drop out really quickly but smoothly or right here we've got a linear fade in Yeah, so that's how that works, really, really simple. However, it gets a lot more complex. In between two points, we can set how they're gonna behave. So if I was to click on this point here, we've got options. So we've got a single curve, we've also got single curve too. It means it curves in a different way, at a different point. So we can create some slightly weirder things. Now, if we take that a step further, we can do like a double curve three, and we can get S curves or really hard in and outs, right? Very weird automation going there. Instead of having to draw it in, we use our curves in between two points to make things like steps, right? So there, we've got a very simple step now. And it's gonna drop off really quickly. Now this gets a hell of a lot more complex when we go into things like stairs, right? So we can now have a stair drop down, so it drops down incrementally. They can go ridiculously detailed though, to the point it almost looks smooth and then inverted right back the other way. So you've got your stair step again. But then we can also do pulses. So we can instantly have like the trance gate effect. Really easy to create buildups that way. Then we've also got wave, which is gonna be a little bit smoother. And we've also got wave, which is more like a triangle. If you want a sine wave, it's smooth stairs. And again, gives us that S curve. So that's how the clips themselves work. Now, I made this clip to control the volume of this piece of audio, right? However, if we were to have pretty much anything else in, we can use it to control that as well. So let's do this from scratch. So let's adjust this control. So we've just adjusted the frequency control here. Let's make a new automation clip just to control that on the EQ. We're gonna go into tools. We're gonna to go to last tweaked. We're gonna to go to create automation clip. And that's gonna create an automation clip for that frequency. And what we're gonna do, we're going to set the type to be, ah oh yes, I'll do a wave. All right, so now that wave is moving on notch. And if we were to adjust the start point, probably get it to be on the BPM as well. A 
Okay, so that's well and good. It now controls that notch filter. Let's add another plugin. This time I'm going to make it a third party. I'm just going to use ProQ, but it doesn't matter what it is. It's just purely for an example. And on ProQ, I'm going to give it a single really steep low pass filter. And we're just going to move the frequency control. What we're now going to do is attach this to the ProQ as well. So you see where it says Param EQ? We've got this little icon just here, much like with the audio. We're going to click on that and we are going to select preview source. So once we've tweaked it, we're going to go into tools. We're going to go down to last tweak. We're going to do link to controller. Then in internal controller, we've actually got Pram EQ2 frequency, right? Now it comes up remove conflicts, switch off remove conflicts. That one piece of automation is now going to control this EQ and this EQ at the same time. So that one automation clip we've made can control a whole number of things. So if you wanted to make a, a fade in work with a filter and add the reverb and everything all together, you can use that one thing to control it. If you want to make things pulse and move, you don't need to automate it or anything. You can literally do it with this. So if we wanted to make the like classic wobble bass, let's grab a bass and we'll do that really, really quickly. So let's grab some kind of bass line, what we got. So we've got this long Reese bass line here. Let's stick that on number one. If we wanted to make the wobble bass sound really, really quickly, we're just gonna move the frequency here. We're gonna go into tools, into last tweaked. This time we're just gonna create a new automation clip. We're gonna set the point to a wave and we wanna adjust that wave to fit our tempo. Super, super easy to do. And you can dive a lot deeper when you start using things like the peak controller and then when you start making up your own patches and putting automation clips into those as well. But that's the absolute basics of it, guys. That's how to use it. And that moves a little bit more into some of the advanced tricks you can get on with it. So I hope that was helpful to everyone. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. If the video was useful for you, please do bash a like. It helps me out in knowing what videos are good to make for you guys. I shall see you all on the next one.